that's the real truth of how I create it. I don't look for jobs. I create them. It came out of pure frustration. I wasn't trying to write no book. Maybe a month or two later, I'm like, oh, my mentor, he's like, you know, that's a good quote. You should take the cuss words out and tone it down a little bit. But originally it was fuck jobs. Fuck you. I create my own shit. That was the original. The, I've written 83 books now. There's nothing sane about that. You know what I'm saying? Someone sits and writes 83 books. That's a lot of depression. It's a lot of trauma. Yes. You know, that's my way of venting though. And I'm okay with it. You know, most people, they run from their problems. I don't run from them. I tackle them. I'm very aware of what's going on, what I'm speaking about, you know, and that's when I believe that you mature, you can mature into a better person because some people have weaknesses that they act like are strengths. I don't do that. I identify my weaknesses and I put myself in a position to be around people that are stronger in areas where I am weak. And that is a very smart business person. I don't care to do taxes. I don't care to be a CPA. I don't care to do business entities, but I know how to make money off all of them by using the people and the resources of platforms of people that I know that need them and just get a percentage off of it. I don't want to do your job. I just want to get compensated. (laughs) And the fact that you utilize quotes with doing that, you are able to memorize something and then integrate new things with the old things to maintain your memory and take in more. And that's how we learn is by connecting the dots to even more information. That's very unique. A lot of people don't invest time. And what that says is that's a lot of reflection, reflecting on the present, the past, and aspiring towards the future. That's awesome. Mm, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Did you legally change your name? Like, like if you have a driver's license? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that well, is good. well, when people ask me that, um, I never have needed society. And you know what I'm saying? I hope you don't take it the wrong way, but it's just me. I don't ask for mis- permission for my, for my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need a, a piece of paper to tell me I'm married. I don't need uh, the government to tell me that my name has changed, you know? Um, And I'll give you an example, right? There was this slave movie called Roots. I don't know if you ever heard of Roots. I haven't. And it was a slave by the name of Kunta Kinte. And they took this slave and they were beating this slave, right? And they were hung him on a thing and they was hitting, hitting him and they was forcing him to claim a name that he did not want, which his name was, they made him say his name was Toby. That's what they wanted him to say. And so I always give the analogy when people ask, did I actually change my name? Um, I give this analogy because Kunta Kinte did not go to a government agency, society, or anything to get the name Toby. They beat that name into him. And so for me, I beat my old set, old name out of me and I claim billionaire PA. So me personally, yes, I legally changed my name within my own heart, within my own mind. And regardless of what anyone calls me, my name is billionaire. Because as a human, I have an option to answer to whoever I want to answer to. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't answer to my past. I just answer to my future and my present. Because, you know, too many people are so far in the past that they, you know what I'm saying? They don't get to enjoy the present moment. And so many people are stuck in the future of, oh, what I'm gonna be. But the only thing that exists is the now. And I'm not who I, who I'm, who I used to be. And I, don't, I do have future goals and future dreams, but I'm not gonna get distracted by that and forget to enjoy this interview. I'm in the present right now. I'm not really worried about what else is going on in 10 minutes or 20 minutes because I've learned to appreciate my existence right now while I'm living. I changed my name because I dedicated my life to inspiring a billion people. That's what I wanted to stand for. That's what I, that's who I am. Not just to make a billion dollars. That's to me, making money is easy to me. It's nothing hard about making money. Anybody can do it if they put their mind to it. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be smart to do it. Money is dumb. It ain't even that smart. People think money make money, but it doesn't. People make money. If everyone on earth died, how could money keep making money? People have to put it in a system to even make its own money. Mm -hmm. So I say that to say the true value is in the human, the people. That's the real value. It's not the money. 
you know, if I connect with you and we have a great idea, we can take these two ideas and put it together and make lots of money. That's what people do, partnerships, collaborations. But not all forms of payment, to me, have to come in the form of cash. So I don't value money like that. Don't look up to it, never have. I completely you know, I like it a hobby, you know? It's fun for me to do. It's just like playing golf. It ain't my passion, but shoot, I'll do it for shits and giggles. I'll do it for fun. But my real purpose is to really help people, man, speak their dreams into existence. That's why I'm doing the podcast. Fuck yeah. I don't care. I don't care if a person has, and I've been on people, I've been on platforms as big as TED Talks, Home Depot, Procter and Gamble, and I mean big platforms. And on the flip side, I've turned around and done podcast interviews with people with two followers. <laughs> Cause it don't matter to me. I've been the person where people shitted on when I was in the back of my truck writing my books. Nobody wanted to listen to what I had to say. Now the books, now this book right here that people was laughing at, this book sells for $136.36. Wow. That's the least expensive physical book that I have. I don't even sell a book under $100 physically because I wanted people to value my work. People don't value free products, man. They don't value and they don't appreciate anything that's free. So the content that I'm writing in here is about bringing cultures together. It's about teaching people how to run businesses. And the only way people are going to appreciate my work is if I charge them for it. God, you are spot on with that. With I try to do the exact same thing. I used to teach Krav Maga and I would teach my soldiers how to fight or whatever. And when I say you show up to do PT, well, at the time I was a sergeant, they would fucking show up. But beforehand, before I got promoted, I would charge them because it didn't, they didn't see the value in it because it was free. But when I started charging, then they became accountable. Then they started showing up early and then getting prepped, getting warmed up, ready to go. And that's why I'm struggling because everything I'm giving out is free and I'm seeing the relationship. And then you just said that. And it's just like, aha moment. I have to share this because I have ADD. <laughs> hey, hey you, we, we all do. <laughs> no, that is that resonates. I would love to pick your brain about business because I don't have a fucking clue. But I'll research the hell out of it. But uh, no, I mean, I was telling a gentleman today. I said, look, I don't know everything. But I know one thing I do know is I know how to make money off of content. I know how to make money off of my ideas. And I was telling him, I said, bro, if I gave you $100,000 right now, you owe the government taxes. True. But if I give you some knowledge, you can take it and you can blow it up and use it over and over and over and over again to make that $100,000. So I said, do you feel that the, when you're interviewing people, if you start to ask very specific questions to where you're asking practical questions, like asking me, Give me a practical way of how you um, run your business. One of the main ways I run my business is through OPM, how to use other people's money to fund my dream. So I'll meaning I'll make one book, right? And the goal would do to get a hundred pre-orders on the book. Well, let's just round and say, round it off and say the book costs a hundred dollars. So a hundred books times a hundred is what? hundred? I think it's a hundred thousand dollars if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. 10,000. So this, this just goes to show you don't have to be that smart to be successful. But let me use the tools that the universe has given me. To make life. 100 times 100, that's $10,000, right? Mm -hmm. So I now have $10,000 in my pocket. You get what I'm saying? That's because you were able to demonstrate that you have people waiting and they want to buy the book and you're, you can show that to somebody who has money, thus they will send, they will loan you the money. And then. Well, they, they're, they're not even loaning me the money they're taking. We're pre-ordering the book. So right now I'm asking you, I'm not asking you realistically, but would you like to buy my book for a hundred dollars? Would you like to pre-order it? It's going to come out February 19th, which is my birthday. And my goal is to get a hundred people to pre-order that book. Now I have a hundred people's money. Then I go, I go to my manufacturing office that may charge me $10 to actually manufacture the book. And then I may, I take your money and I fund my dream. And then I ship you your products on time. Yes. That's a hundred percent win-win situation. So that knowledge that I gave to you, you get to put that on steroids and say, I'm going to do a hundred thousand. 
I'm going to do 50,000. You know, you don't, I'm just using one number as an example. Of course. But Some it's- people don't want to do that, like with the podcast. So the reason why I say practical is because if this was in, you included this in the podcast, that's something valuable that people are now getting from it. So then you can say, I'm going to release one podcast a week on Patreon for $20 a month. If you want to subscribe to my channel, these are the type of people that I'm interviewing to help people grow their businesses. Well, I'll pay $20 a month. Okay. What's a million dollars? A million dollars divided by 20. Can you get 50,000 people to give us $20 a month? Okay. Now you're making a million dollars a month off of just interviewing people. That's the way my brain thinks. Wow. I want to learn that every month. I just got to, every week. I just got to give you an inspirational video. So that means I have to interview four people a month, four to five people a month. Every Monday I'm dropping them. I don't do this, but I'm saying if I was you every Monday, I'm dropping an inspirational video of someone I interview. You can pay me nine sixty three a month. I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because it's intangible. It's intellectual property. It's not like I have to ship you anything. Only thing I'm giving is time to sit here and interview people, which I'm going to do it anyway, because it's my passion, but I love it. But I understand that if you don't pay me, you're not going to value it. Wow. I've been looking at it the wrong way. I thought by giving it away, like it got overtaken by my passion is the fact that I want people to have this for free because they're entitled to it. But the fact is that when you present them this information, they don't value it because you don't put a value on it. Yeah. I mean, you'll have, you'll have, you'll have, if your goal to me, this is my personal belief. If your goal is to be impact over income, if your, if your dream is to be more impactful, like you do the math, right? Would you give one of my books cost $900, right? Would you buy a book for $900 and not read it? I would read it the first day it came in. Right. But have you ever bought a $10 book and did not read it? No, I started every book I've purchased, but I have not finished them all. I'm trying to read 33 different ones at once. And it's kind of stupid. (laughs) But my my point was every $900 book that you would ever purchase, you'd Mm -hmm. read that whole book. Correct. But every $10 book that you purchase, you haven't finished the whole book. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's so here's where I'm, what I'm saying, and you have to decide which person you are because there's no wrong way to this business. My dream is impact over income. So meaning I'd rather sell less books for $900 knowing that I had an impact in your life than to sell 1 million books for $10 and I'm the only one that got rich. But nobody read the books. You see what I'm saying? Now that makes a lot of sense. To some people who write books or whatever it is they're doing, doing podcasts, you might be okay with 1 million subscribers, 1 million views, but shit, nobody applied your message. Maybe one or two people. So me, I'm impact over income. So meaning I'd rather sell my book for 136 and hear a bunch of people like, oh, I wouldn't give him 136. But the people who are buying it or reading it and starting businesses, I'm impact over income. I'm a world changer. I'm not an influencer. I'm not looking for you anyway. I'm not looking for the $10 person. I'm not looking for your $50. You're not my clientele. You're not the person I want to sit with. And answering your question, yeah, some podcasts, you know, you might want to test out and just test it out. Give some away for free and charge some and you you will see the results you'll see it off the top man you can get a hundred you can get a hundred people to give you ten dollars a month bro that's a thousand dollars a month of just residual income of just doing what you love to do and there are people out there that will pay for what just to sit and see what we're talking about because this is what i do to run my business this is like a lot of people don't know that the minimum markup in business that i operated off of is 300 percent markup that alone changes people's lives. Some, you might meet other business people and they might say my minimum markup is 600%. I've heard some people say that. But as a business person, you set your own markup. 
But, but, but what it does for most people is the people who are like, oh, I buy it for five, sell it for 10. You have a business set up for disaster. That's not enough profit to run a business. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what a multimillionaire says. The goal is capitalize. This is what capitalism is. Buy it for $5, sell it for a minimum of 20. That's the model I live by. When someone's booking me to speak, it's a minimum 300% markup based on my time that I'm giving. If I buy this button for $5, I minimally mark it up to $20. Now I can go to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You get what I'm saying? You can go as high as you want, but I cannot sell it no less than 20. I cannot sell it no less than 300% markup. Something cost me $10, um, what's that? 300% would be 20, 30, $40. That would be the minimum that I could sell that for. I cannot go no less than $40. So me knowing my target audience, I might say, okay, I'm going to sell it for 80. And then some people are like, oh, I don't have 80. I got 60. Okay, well, they still gave me $20 more than what I wanted. And that's why you have the Cyber Mondays, the Black Fridays. People don't understand percentages. This is how businesses operate. I'm just the one that's exposing it, I guess. I'm sharing it and telling people. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Man, everyone who purchases things, they do it off of emotions, bro. Majority of people do do things. Every most of the things that people purchase is an emotional purchase. Yes, that's why they had those impulse buy sections in every single consumer store outlet store you go into. It's everywhere because it's based off your timing. That is that is ama- This is amazing information, Billy. And I really do appreciate your time, and I can uh-huh. information is a model that can be applicable in anything. Hmm. In books, in podcasts, in your in uh, motivational speaking, in anything you do, that's that is genius. I love that. Oh man, absolutely, bro! I appreciate it. Okay, I was homeless thirty six months. That's why I was asking, and I slept in my truck sixty three straight days. Your middle number is six three six. I was homeless sixty three days. See right there, your number. Yes. I was homeless 63 days Mm -hmm. and I slept in the back of my truck 36 months. Interesting. Those are your numbers. And I didn't mean to send you my location, but I'm in Miami, Florida right now. (laughs) No, you're you're good. So do you maintain those numbers as a reminder of where you were? Like Yeah. I mean, that's why the buttons are thirty-six dollars and sixty-three cents. That's why that book is one thirty-six sixty-three. Holy shit. Okay. This is this is this is really interesting. Wow. Yeah. So it's now you're not buying a product, you're buying my story. And you can't discount that. <laughs> thank thank you so I, much. If I just pick random numbers, you know, anything you say, I think that you should pick numbers that are meaningful to you. And then it will prompt you to explain the reason why you priced it that. And when people find out your story, they're more willing to support it even more because it has a purpose and no one wants to discount your story. So if I told you this dream button was 36, was $40, people are like, oh, that's a lot of money for a dream button you know, for just a button. But when you say it's 3663, and this is the reason why, because I was homeless for 36 months and I slept in the back of my truck for 63 straight days. And every time one of these dream buttons sell, we feed one homeless person every single day, every day. I control it in my business. We, we do it. If I sell a hundred, we feed a hundred people. It's just simple as that. And that's what I do every single day. I just, because, but the purpose of the dream button is for you to wear it. And when you're feeling down, one, two, three, four, tap into your dream. If you feel like you're about to cut somebody out or you're about to lose it, one, two, three, four, tap into your dream. Tap into your higher frequency. It's just a reminder to speak your dream into existence and stay a world changer, not an influencer. On the 19th of every month, I didn't ask the government, I didn't ask society, I took my holiday. It's called the National Speak Your Dreams Holiday. On the 19th of every month, people wear their dream buttons and they tap in and speak their dreams into existence. What's a revolution if you're not a revolutionary person? Meaning, if I got to always ask someone to do something, that's not a revolution. I'm a revolution. Meaning I just create things and people just going to follow suit. I'm not going to ask for permission for my success. It's not what I do. 
I just create it. And to all who wants to follow, wants to lead with me, not follow, lead. But this is a, 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 a revolution where black, white, Asian, all people will unite, come together on one accord and speak dreams into existence together. So all the people who want to continue to fight, man, how much money do you need? I'll become a trillionaire and give it to you. If that's how big your ego is, if that's what you, if that's what's important to you, you want to own all the land, take all the land. It's not worth killing people though. Mm. So I want to be the person that pays the race, the racist people all the money they need so they can just go off on an island by themselves. Whatever it is you need, let people be happy, man. It's not worth it. Millions of people are dying from cancer, diabetes, um, HIV, all kinds of disease, and all of it is curable and they know it. 